Hi everyone, my name is Ayewa Tsugu and I'm a CG artist from Lagos, Nigeria. I work with a team of other artists at Synapse on the game Create. Of course, you already know what the game is about, so I won't waste time talking about that. I'll just introduce myself a little bit more, then I'll talk about the elements that I worked on for the game project. Alright, so as a CG artist, I work with Maya, Blender, Gimp, Photoshop, Softest Painter, and of course Unity. Uh, default game engine. So I'll be talking about the snake element and all the work processes that went into creating it. Now I won't go into all the technical details but I'll just elaborate a little bit on my workflow and my choices and the decisions that I have to make. Of course the first thing is getting reference material. Of course you can get different references about um, snakes from Google Images. Um, now this was quite a challenging project because I had to create the bone system that would um, animate the snake element. Now the issue is, um, primarily, I'm a modeler, so I'm more um, used to creating assets and um, hard surface objects. Yes. So animation is not really my strong point. So this was also a good learning process. Anyway, so the reason I chose Blender was because Blender makes it quite easy to animate and to um, get all your assets working. So like I said, I'm not um, an animator. So I had to create a bone system that would work. Now, off the bat, it should have been very challenging because uh, many things I had to take into consideration was the um, vert counts. Like, I couldn't, it, I couldn't go beyond a certain amount. And if I had done that, it would have slowed down Unity greatly and of course it would be very difficult for the assets to work in-game for the mobile version. So of course I had to think on my beats and think smartly on how to get the verts to be low and still look as realistic as possible. Second, the major challenge I also faced was the bones. Of course you can see that the, net, the bone network were moving in two opposite directions and I had to make it work as well. Now. Once I was able to figure that out and I was able to get the bone structure to work both in opposite directions, the next obstacle I had to tackle was animation. Of course, to animate you need reference as well. So I'll just be showing you this image. Of course, I went online and I was able to get this. Now this kind of looks like something from mathematics. I don't know how best to describe this. But on top here it says snake locomotion ghost. So what I did was I imported this into um, Blender and then I positioned the snake to the first one, which is the red. And then what I did was I started animating along each one. So I would move from the red to this one while I'll move the snake element across from here to this one and then from this one to the gray, to the gray, then to the light blue and to the dark blue. And once I had done that process, then I would just have to copy and then paste my motion. So I'll go back to Blender now. So you can see I have lots of uh, keyframes here. So I'll just take it back to the beginning. Yeah, just take it back to the beginning. Take it away from um, wireframe here. And play. Okay, so as you can see, this was um, the idle motion. So once you put this into the game, the snake will be idle and then to do nothing. So another thing I had to tackle was how to animate the snake in motion itself. Now I couldn't do that on this rig because that would make cause the snake to break. So what I did was I had a different snake that had the motion animation on it. So I'll just be going to the new layer. Let's move this around a bit. You can see that. Okay. Take this to the beginning and boom. So as you can see, as I was describing, the easiest way for me to get the motion was, oops, it's finished. I'll just run that again. So what I think I'll just take it down to, what now? Um, 160, so I'll just make this 160 so that the animation will loop. Okay, so with that animation looping, all right, cool. So I'll just open that image again. So like I was saying, to get the animation, what I did was I positioned the snake on the red line and then moved that to the, uh, what I call this a pink line, and then from the pink line to the 
gray line, on the gray to the light blue to the dark blue, and then I repeated that process over and over again, then copied the keyframes and then duplicated them on the timeline. So what that did was, anytime the animation runs to an end, it would definitely start all over again. Now the thing was, I had to figure out how to blend this animation procedure and this at the same time for it to be seamless. So of course, after getting uh, painting the weights and make sure everything was looking prim and proper, I exported this as an FBX file and imported it into Unity. So we'll move over to Unity. Um, I won't talk more about the texturing procedure. Uh, it's quite relatively easy, you know texture and then um, I picked out the texture so I wouldn't have to import so many maps like the normal map, the specular map and all the different maps that would have made this snake look very realistic. So what I did was once I imported all my textures into um, Blender and I keyed them in the right nodes, I baked the texture so that it would have all the details and then moved that texture file into um, Unity. And in Unity, of course, what I did was um, the resolution for the image was very low, about 512, yeah, 512, so that I could be able to um, work well on the engine. Anyway, back to the animation. So, of course, when you come into Unity, Unity gives you an option to review your animation. If I can remember where that is. Okay, can't remember. I haven't opened Unity in a while. Anyway, so. What I did was I was able to link both animations together and then to make it seamless, we added a transition to it. So when you move from one animation, it goes from one to the other without giving a break. So you can see when it starts, it starts in the idle position and then after a while it moves into, yep. So you can see, and of course when it finishes, it's repeats the whole procedure again. So it goes in a, in a circle. So it goes from idle to motion, and motion back to idle, and then from idle back to motion again. So it had to be seamless, and if you are able to unlock the snake element in the game, you will notice that everything works fine. And of course, the animation will be played, and then the motion will move from any axis possible. Um, all right, so I think that was, um, I think I, of all the elements, I had to create, I think this is one of my favorites because it was very challenging. It was quite a learning um, curve for me, and yeah. So that's it on the snake element. Thank you for watching. In our next video, we'll be showing you different elements. Thank you for watching again, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.